Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to start first by thanking Rebecca Harms, Petrus Strevichus, and uh, Jeremias Titsina for uh, having organized this conference. I think it's very important that you're putting in the forefront a very important issue. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, the recently released political prisoners, uh, Ilmi Umerov and Artem Chihos. Uh, I'd like to say that the Ukrainian World Congress has been actively advocating for your release and is continuing to advocate for the release of all the other remaining political prisoners, both in Crimea and in eastern Ukraine. I also want to take that opportunity to thank our distinguished members of Parliament, of the European Parliament, that have also contributed with your uh, activities, your efforts to that release. Ukrainian World Congress is an international coordinating body representing the interests of Ukrainians living outside of Ukraine. We, uh, there are about 20 million Ukrainians living outside of Ukraine, and our network is a network of 53 countries with member organizations uh, that uh, work on various issues, but primarily today on issues dealing with fundamental principles and human rights. We are concerned regarding the situation in Crimea with obviously its illegal occupation. We are concerned with the militarization of Crimea, and we are concerned with the blatant and daily human rights violations. We are equally concerned with the fact that the international community is taking a defeatist approach regarding Crimea. Very often one says that one cannot compromise on the fundamental principle of the territorial integrity of independent countries and as that we obviously need to advocate for the return of the occupied seven plus percent of eastern Ukraine that is currently illegally occupied by the Russian Federation, but Crimea is more problematic. If we take that approach, we will never win. I think it will also ensure that the principle of the territorial integrity of independent countries becomes a negotiable fundamental principle, and we can erase the word fundamental uh, next to the word principle. We are concerned with the blatant violations. We're equally concerned with the fact that human rights and fundamental principles are currently being negotiated. I just returned last week from the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe where clearly resolutions were passed time and again from 2014 regarding the situation in Crimea and in eastern Ukraine and that notwithstanding all of the resolutions that were passed one would have thought that logically after four years one would have invoked the relevant stat article of the uh, Council of Europe statute and excluded the Russian Federation altogether from a club that it clearly does not belong to, one is negotiating the return of the Russian Federation with full rights because the Russian Federation has blatantly confronted the Council of Europe with an ultimatum saying that it will not pay its part of the budget and we are therefore negotiating on fundamental principles and if the Council of Europe goes in that direction there will be no Council of Europe. We're equally, we're equally concerned with the militarization of Crimea. I'm always amazed when I talk to uh, politicians with leaders and with ministers of foreign affairs that's, that talk about the historical past of Crimea not realizing that the Russian Federation is gaining a strategic geopolitical advantage by militarizing Crimea and that we're not reacting in an adequate way. A 
As a matter of fact, we are acting exactly the way we acted prior to the Second World War, thinking that by giving Crimea or letting the issue of Crimea on the side, we can appease the Russian Federation. And we have seen that all, every single time in history that anybody has played the dangerous game of appeasing an authoritarian corrupt regime, one always led to a higher tragedy. That is why I would call on this conference to reiterate the importance of not only maintaining sanctions. I'm always baffled by the fact that we say that sanctions need to be maintained even though the Russian Federation continues to blatantly abuse the situation both in eastern Ukraine and in Crimea. And we always add, but if the Russian Federation starts behaving better, we will reduce the sanctions. But we don't take the same approach of saying that if the Russian Federation misbehaves, the sanctions will be increased. And Ambassador Kurt Volker, that has analyzed the situation in eastern Ukraine and in Crimea, has said that 2017 was the most violent year since 2014. The OSCE has said that between January 1 and May 31 of 2017, there were one-third more soldiers that have died than during the same period in 2016. The OSCE has stated that in 2017, there were over 85,000 more ceasefire violations, totaling over 400,000 ceasefire violations in 2017, compared to 320 in 2016. That is why I'm saying that we should be seeking an increase of the sanctions, including the exclusion of the Russian Federation from SWIFT. The second issue that I would be uh, asking for this conference, monitoring the situation in Crimea. And we need to address this issue. Third, as has already been sent, said by one of the panelists, I think that for all the, all the countries that have not yet adopted a Magnitsky law, they should be encouraged to do that. And then once that legislation is adopted, it shouldn't be just sitting on a shelf. It should be implemented, and the Magnitsky legislation should be used as an effective tool. Finally, I think what the chairman, uh, Rebecca Harms, has said, I think that we need to show that football is not more important than human rights. And clearly, there should...